Hello everyone, it's Allie. Today we're going to take a closer look at the responsive and touch features found in Ignite UI. We're going to show you how the grid responds to different devices and display sizes while still keeping all of its useful features right at your fingertips. There are a lot of great things about working with HTML5 applications, especially the fact that they can work just as well on mobile devices as they do on the desktop. One of the first considerations the grid makes is the many ways to deal with different amounts of horizontal space. Here you can see how the grid looks on a full desktop page. Now I'll resize the browser down to about the size of a tablet in portrait orientation. And notice that the employee ID column is now hidden. I can take it even narrower and size the browser to about the size of a phone. Now you'll notice that not only is the employee ID column hidden, but the title column is hidden too. For very small sizes, the grid will pivot into a view that displays the data in the grid vertically rather than horizontally. Now, what if you're working on a phone, but you still need access to Nancy's job title? No worries, all you have to do is tap, or in this case, click, on the striped bar on the right. Once you tap the bar, a column chooser appears which gives you the opportunity to select which columns you'd like to have appear and which you'd like to have hidden. So now, just the last name and title columns are shown in the grid. Okay, now let's take a look at the code and see what it takes to make all this happen. Here's the code for the page in our demonstration. To get you acquainted with what's going on here, let's start at the top and look at the style sheet references. This page is referencing the Infragistics theme and basic structures style sheets, which are requirements to work with Ignite UI. Then the page references Bootstrap, which is not a requirement in general, but it becomes important for this demo when needing to build in responsive behavior. You'll see in a moment how you can use any responsive CSS framework you want. But in this case, this page uses Bootstrap. Now let's take a look at the markup on the page. Here, a table element with the ID of grid is the target for the rendered IG grid on the page. As far as included JavaScript files for the page, here the page is referencing a few things. Modernizer, which is required for the grid to enable touch features, jQuery, jQuery UI, the trial versions of the Infragistics core and line of business components that make up Ignite UI. And lastly, there's a file that acts as the data source to the control. The northwind.js file returns an array of JSON objects based off the Northwind database. Then, down in the script for the page, you can see that the IG grid is being initialized against the selector to the grid element using its ID. The rest of the script should look fairly familiar to you if you've worked with the grid at all before. Now let's dive into how to give the grid its responsive behavior. The responsive feature is enabled by adding it by name to the features array. From there, you can configure via column settings what CSS classes are applied to each column. Here we're using Bootstrap's responsive classes of hidden SM and hidden XS to hide employee ID at the size of a tablet in portrait orientation, and hide title at the size of a phone. Remember, you don't have to use Bootstrap here. You can use any CSS classes that contain the desired media query settings for how you want your grid to respond. Here, using Bootstrap just makes it easy. Enabling the responsive feature like this not only hides the appropriate columns at the given media query breakpoints, but also makes them available in the column chooser if the user decides to make them visible when they're using the grid. All right, let's see it in action one more time. So here you have it at full size, and then a bit smaller, down to a phone size, where employee ID and the title disappear. Okay, now let's look at this page running on some mobile devices. For the rest of this demonstration, I'll be mirroring either my iPad or iPhone to the screen. Let's begin with the iPad in landscape mode. Here the grid renders the same as how we saw it on the desktop, because it has quite a bit of space to work with on the page. Now I'll rotate the iPad, and you can see how the employee ID column is now hidden. When we take a look at the page on the iPhone, 
you can see that in landscape mode and portrait mode, the employee ID and title columns are hidden by default. Okay, let's return to the iPad. Now I showed you before that you can tap the striped bar to get to the column chooser, but there's an even better way to interact with the features of the grid. And that's with the feature chooser. If you remember from the code listing, there are a handful of different features enabled on the grid. The easiest way to access these features is to tap on a column header. As you tap on the header, you see a touch optimized chooser appear, which allows you to interact with the features enabled on the grid. In this case, you can sort, hide, move, and filter columns. You even have the opportunity to work with the features through their basic interactions or through more advanced levels, as you see with the sort on multiple and advanced filter buttons. So for instance, I can move the title column to the first position in the grid and then tap a column header again to do a multiple sort. Okay, let's look at the code. Looking at the code, you can see that the sorting, filtering, hiding, and column moving features are set up in the same way you normally would, whether or not you're building for a touch environment. So the feature chooser is just built into the grid. Okay, now let's return back to our device. Another feature not seen in the chooser is the selection feature. Now, when you're working in a touch environment, the first tap of a cell selects the cell. The second tap places the cell into edit mode if you have the updating feature enabled. And if you would like to create a multiple selection, you can simply tap on a cell and then tap and drag to select multiple cells. So here, I'll select all the last names. Okay, now let's check out the code for selection. Here, the grid needs to make sure the selection feature has the touch drag select option set to true in order to operate correctly. Okay, for the last feature, let's return again to the iPad. This last behavior I wanna show you is how you can use the swipe gesture to delete rows in the grid. The swipe gesture is a very natural way to interact with data. With the IG grid, you can swipe from either direction to expose the row delete button. The code to make this work is found in the updating feature. Here, the edit mode needs to be set to cell, and then the rest of the configuration follows normal conventions. And there you have it. The IG grid is ready for applications that are meant to work on many different devices, all because of the great touch features it has. If you'd like to work with this code yourself, you can clone or fork it on GitHub at the address below. And that's what's in development.